have a, a, a very strong urban strategy which we put in place in 2012, which we've been executing um, ever since. Now, we are focused on the gateway cities of Sydney and Melbourne, where roughly 80% of our um, of our capital is located, and I think it doesn't take too much explanation to understand uh, these are the drivers of the Australian economy with the deepest employment markets, strongest population growth, massive infrastructure spend. Uh, we're big believers in both cities, and that's where we're focusing our attention, particularly around our urban um, asset creation capabilities across each of our business segments, office, industrial, retail, and residential. You can see on this slide that we we have an overweight to our passive capital, which is uh, we, which we signaled two years ago that we were going to increase that proportion. Now that's providing very strong support for a continuing growing dividend with very high quality passive income and supported by the development profit, all up delivering a 10.1% group return on invested capital for FY19, significantly above our weighted average cost of capital. Uh, so we did deliver on our promises for FY19 with earnings up 4%, dividends up 5%, 13% total return um, and delivering right at the top end of guidance, which shouldn't have been a surprise given that we uh, just done an equity raising and guided to that, uh, but it was very pleasing nonetheless to yet again uh, deliver at the top end of our guidance. More importantly, we're very well placed for FY20, having done all the hard work over the last five years around the cycle to position the business uh, to where it is today. Now, we were an active seller of assets, as you know, as cap rates compressed, divesting, um, divesting significant amount of non-core assets, um, some of which I think would be unsaleable now. At the same time, we invested in our asset creation capability uh, and we harnessed $7 billion worth of third-party capital. Now, that is now actually starting to generate a meaningful income stream, which I think the, the market is appreciating as another passive income stream of, of recurring earnings. Um, derived from the fees of, the, of that uh, third, third party capital. Our $3.1 billion active commercial pipeline has well progressed, and I'll talk to that in a second. The most important thing is it's 90% pre let. So you can see where the income is coming from for the next several years in our commercial development pipeline. And importantly, we do think it is the right time to start to restock the residential business. We purchased 3,000 lots during the year, and we think that the changing market conditions have provided a fantastic opportunity. Uh, for us to restock with true Mervac sites in our favoured submarkets in Sydney and Melbourne, focused as always on the domestic owner occupier. So, all up, the focused urban strategy is delivering very strong, visible, secure cash flows that you can see for many years into the future. We've got a highly sustainable distribution growth, and we are continuing to target return on invested capital above our weighted average cost of capital. Talked about the transition to passive earnings, which is well underway through the asset creation capability as new buildings come online, they bring new passive income with them. And we expect it to deliver 5% per annum passive income growth between FY19 and 20 and 21. Now, the passive capital has in actually increased over the year 14%, and it's now sitting at 87% of our total capital. And I think goes some way to explaining now, the shift in market perception around Mervac over the last couple of years, recognizing the quality and security of that income. From the active side of the book with 13% uh, with of, our, of our capital, we do remain on track to deliver that billion dollars of active earnings between FY19 and FY21. And I'll talk to that in a second. And we continue to se secure new opportunities right across the board in each of our sectors. And I won't go into too much detail here, but this is the next pipeline of commercial and industrial developments. Uh, this is restocking the residential portfolio, and it's significantly increasing our industrial portfolio with the very significant land banking uh, that we've got in place around Badgerys Creek, uh, the second airport in Sydney, which will be a, a very exciting multi-year uh, development project for us. Uh, the capital um, position of the business is very strong, balance sheet's in great shape. Uh, we did say that we wanted to keep gearing at the low end of our range, which we have done. Our debt maturity profile is, uh, is the smoothest and longest it's ever been. So we're very well placed from a debt perspective and debt markets are certainly open um, to Mervac uh, given our very strong credit ratings. And that means that recurring income is supporting the distribution growth. The distribution is highly cash covered. We have a very low payout ratio, including AFFO payout ratio of 77 percent, which compared to our peers is, uh, is very comfortable indeed. And so I think that should give you a, a degree of comfort around the passive earnings fueling the distribution growth 
and the cash in the business covering the payout of that. This is an important slide that looks at the growth in passive assets and third party assets. And you can see the very strong growth in external AUM of 33% between FY15 and 19. And importantly, generating a higher level of fee income uh, than previously. Uh, this is one of my favorite slides. This is the commercial development pipeline out to 2022, showing each of the developments coming online uh, each year, the amount that they're pre-let um, and the uh, total amount of $90 million worth of new recurring NOI coming into the business another $200 million of expected NTA uplift and $130 million of development profit coming into the business, all locked in. And I can tell you that each of those developments is on schedule, on budget, and will deliver this income um, out to the future. From a retail perspective, uh, there are clearly cyclical and structural uh, effects going on in the retail business, so we're very, very comfortable with where we're positioned, largely in Sydney, largely in densely populated, affluent, low unemployment, high propensity to spend progressive customer territory as shown in the darker red there. And we've been adjusting our mix accordingly um, in our retail shopping centers. Uh, we're slightly obsessed with the generational shift at the moment. By 2024, what you might call digital natives are going to rule the world. They're going to be the majority of the workers and the majority of the consumers. And they've grown up, these people, with the ease of the internet all their lives and it will continue to shape how we work and how we shop and how we live. And so we're using that as something to really stimulate our thinking about how to position our products into the future. Uh, but I think the, our retail stats speak for themselves. We're right at the top of the class, whatever metric you want to measure, uh, the fact that we're positioned in the, these right catchments with the right mix of retailers um, has really stood us in very good stead. Uh, from a restocking point of view on residential, we restocked very well between 11 and 15. Uh, that has now set us up into um, harvesting for the last several years uh, the very strong returns that we have built into the book. And we have 28,000 lots under control, but we do think now is a good time to restock. And we bought 3,000 new lots in FY19 and continue to look at more new business now than we have for several years uh, with very favorable market conditions uh, for us to restock the business. So we believe that uh, we're going to be able to see good three cycle earnings coming out of the residential business. Uh, we're still uh, seeing a very high level of capital efficiency so that we can flex up and down with the market uh, stocked in the right areas with the focus on the domestic owner occupier. Now, we do think we'll do another two and a half thousand lot settlements in this financial year. The very good news is for the first time I can remember, we have a first half skew. And so we're settling Eastbourne, St. Leonard's and Marrickville this first half in our apartments, record level of apartment settlements. They're going extremely well. Defaults are still under 2%. Customers are very happy. They are getting finance, a bit slow perhaps, uh, but they are getting finance. And we're very confident uh, that the 80% of EBIT that's already secured for FY20 in the residential business will be largely done uh, by, the, uh, by the first half, which is very nice to see a first half skew rather than that back end skew that we normally have. So finally, to FY20 guidance, we're guiding to 3 to 4% EPS growth and another 5% growth in um, distributions. So in summary, I think Mervex in fantastic shape. Our urban asset creation strategy focused on Sydney and Melbourne and our proven creation skills are delivering strong passive earnings of high quality across the business. And we continue to, to work through the residential cycle, continuing to deliver returns and good customer experience right through what has been a challenging time in the residential market.